What's going on, everybody? This is probably the biggest piece of news slash information that we've ever gotten in the game. And this was an exclusive interview between Tana and one of the developers here for the game. Now, this was an hour long interview. I did watch the whole thing. I went ahead and took some notes. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you all and kind of give my thoughts because I do have a lot of thoughts on a lot of things going on here, as well as as I said, it's a lot of information, so we got a lot to get through. Let's uh, let's start here uh, and dive into it. First off, I'm very, very excited, and I am very positive for what's to come, as well as what they said in this interview. There were a lot of questions, mainly around glyphs. Uh, there was a huge portion of this alongside multi-squad PvP, some miscellaneous stuff across the interview, of course, uh, and, uh, well... I like what they said about glyphs, although I do have some criticisms and concerns. I like what they said about multi-squad PvP, although that's not necessarily a game mode that I particularly enjoy. I think the way they're rolling it out is probably the most likely thing um, outside of, or I guess you'd say, the most like uh, a game mode that I would enjoy for multi-squad PvP, so I guess that's a good thing. And a lot of the things that they mentioned in terms of quality of life and in Chapter 1 for raids and such, all this stuff was good. Let's start off, though. The first topic was glyphs. This was, as I said, a major portion of the conversation. And they mentioned a few different things that honestly had me, I guess, laugh a little bit as well as, well, I think are positive. First off, they mentioned how primaries are going to be very constrained. This is very typical in a lot of uh, games. You have like maybe your left side pieces all have maybe three to four or five options to run. And then you're uh, right side pieces are completely uh, static main stats. It looks like you're going to have even more limitations than that. And the real, I guess you say uniqueness, are the sets themselves, the way they uh, interact with characters, and the roles themselves. So they are going to have very limited roles, but you're going to have options. And what I mean by that is the actual stat itself is going to have a low role, but you have a lot of options to choose from. And uh, they mentioned that they might be like visually improving characters, something that you'll notice on your characters, as well as the sets themselves. They specifically mentioned actual sets in design right now, sets that potentially give you extra stamina at the end of your turn, things that give you turn meter boost in exchange for negatives later on in the battle, things like unbreakable giving you synergies like might and certain buffs like that. These are very unique sets and stuff that we haven't necessarily seen in a lot of other games, especially so like Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. A lot of the mod sets are a little boring. These ones seem a little bit more exciting. We have, and they mentioned this specifically, speed not being as important. Now I put a little uh, LOL there because I, I don't really see, or I've not seen, period. Any game that I've played that has speed as a mechanic that you can roll for has always been king. Unless you hard limit the amount of speed a character can obtain, they will always be the most desirable role, period. I highly doubt that even though they are going to take steps to limit this, that it's actually going to fix that situation. So we'll see what they do. They don't want it to be the most important thing. And uh, well, we'll see if that's the case. I doubt it will be though. Maybe when it first rolls out, they'll make some changes to make speed less important because I think that's what's going to happen. They also mentioned that uh, this is going to happen this calendar year. And one of the biggest criticisms that I have is that they said the stats are going to be locked behind gear level. So let's say you have a mod or a glyph in this case, and you're leveling it up and you have like a gear 10 character. Well, that gear 10 character can access all of the stats on it. But if you move that glyph to a low gear character, that character will be locked out of a portion of those stats. I think this is a terrible system. They talked about some justification for it, but let's let's look at it from a free to play player's perspective who's in the mid to late game. You're developing your glyphs. You have a lot of glyphs. Let's say you're going to run into an event that might require decently geared characters, or let's say you're going to run into um, maybe you're running a squad in PvP or whatever. Glyphs are one way that free to play players can really develop their roster and achieve things that, well, you normally wouldn't have and you just need high gear level. This kind of limits that in a big way. So I think that they should probably relook at this and maybe think about either not having this in the game or having some sort of other um, restriction if they want us to restrict it or if they want to restrict it. They did talk about multi-squad PvP, as I mentioned. It is going to be a solo mode. It is going to be a 5v5 mode. And they mentioned 
kind of like a grand arena championship for those of you that play star wars galaxy of heroes like you get matched up you have place a defense you fight the opponent's offense um and uh at the end of the day you could like change your defense and eventually as you level up you're going to expand territories so you have multiple territories to defend and uh, attack and they want this to replace your daily arena which is kind of interesting so i'm actually all for this i think that the base level mode in the game right now is extremely boring i'm not a fan of arena basically in any game i always find it very boring it's the best meta team there's not really a strategic component to it it's whoever has uh typically the better mods or the better gear in this case the better gear at the current moment or star levels it's just not a particularly interesting thing of course there are strategies that you can use to push a little bit further but game modes like these where you have multiple territories to defend you can only use your characters once not on offense and defense these types of modes are way more exciting way more strategic and way more i guess you say upward mobility for these especially if you're free to play so i'm much much more excited about this and i'm curious to see how it's going to roll out but it is a little bit weird and something that i've not really seen in other games so yeah we got see it in the game i guess then we have a lot of misc changes uh, miscellaneous changes the first one they talked about was chapter one fixes and i love this okay this is an amazing change and i highlighted that they talked about how if you get five stacks on the bomber it will guarantee target the enemies that's what they said love this change this is an excellent change for chapter one probably the thing i'm most excited about to be honest because chapter one is not fun five stacks on the bomber is a very reasonable amount it's something that most of the time you're able to accomplish I'm usually able to get about seven stacks on the bomber quite regularly and uh well guaranteed application of the bomber it makes strategic uh, planning very 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 easy to do which I'm much more much happier about I cannot stress this enough they also talked about how the tanks are obnoxious and if you spawn like three of them it kind of ruins your run so they're gonna bring down the tanks perhaps make no guaranteed taunts or provokes this is absolutely true if you respond like two to three tanks you can literally just brick a run uh, and it could be really frustrating sometimes so very happy about this they talked about how they have a five-year content roadmap they're going to follow character stories like how you know you have strider and then he eventually becomes king of gondor aragorn you know like the uniter like you have so many different titles for aragorn and uh, yeah they're very excited they're talking about you know how to develop these characters into the legendary characters that they are so i imagine they did not say this but i mentioned this legendary events heroes journeys these types of things where you actually track and, and have to develop a character most likely using characters within their own past to unlock the character we have events coming who knows when <laughs> uh they talked about events and how they wanted to have events in the game and uh well there's no guarantee that it's going to come soon, but they just mentioned that they want it in the game. Cool. Star changes. Good. That's what the direct quote of the developers mentioned. The ton asks if the star changes, they were happy with the position. They said they liked how the star changes uh, rolled out and they think the star changes are good. So I actually agree with this. I've been skeptical at the very beginning. I mentioned how, depending on how they roll it out, it could be very tricky for free to play players because innately, you could have beaten a content with less investment but now uh you just need to have the higher star levels to get the same power level comparison based on how they rolled it out but actually i found well it's actually a very easy way to progress as a free to play player just focusing on star levels which i think is actually quite nice um it gives you a very easy progression path and uh well most whales are already buying characters anyways so i guess maybe it's um less free to play friendly but i don't know i just i personally in terms of gameplay i've enjoyed it so also they mentioned they are going to be continuing to recur marquee events i love this i think this is very very important um to a healthy early game for any gotcha game quality of life changes they talked about a few other things uh within this but um they didn't give many specifics they did mention raid key tracking in specific uh, that's about the only one that i remember or or could write down and i i do agree there are some quality of life things missing from the game and i hope to see more improvements going forward and uh well specifics mentioned they talked about how elrond is coming sooner rather than later and uh well i think this is a kind of a uh, a key for guys farm your elves if you haven't already they also mentioned that you can use any elf possible so any requirement that says use x faction or x character whatever it, it will expand to include all the factions characters i assume this was going to happen i think this would be a terrible thing if you couldn't use characters like legolas or any of the future elves but uh yeah you can so perfect 
They also talked about the smog raid. Uh, now, this is just speculation. The developer mentioned that, uh, hey, I want to see a smog raid. And I would be sick. I'm not going to lie. I think that would be a really, really excellent. You could run with Thorne's company, maybe interacting with them. I don't know. Maybe you do some sort of like Hobbit uh, spinoff uh, in terms of like getting the, the Hobbit like trilogy characters in there. I don't know. You got so many options with that. So many different things you could do with raids and such. But that's kind of the wrap up, guys. I'm sure that there's other things like small things that uh, I missed. So I'll leave a link to this interview down below if you want to watch the full hour. This is just kind of like the, you know, meat and potatoes of what you are going to hear in this. It's definitely worth watching, though, if you have the time, you know, pull up in a, a, a podcast when you're working or whatever. It was interesting and uh, I enjoyed it. I'm definitely really, really appreciative of CG doing things like this. They used to do this a lot in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. They have done less and less of this since from what I've seen. Uh, they used to have a lot of community events and I'm really excited to see the Heroes of Middle Earth team do these community things first with all things Middle Earth, the exclusive kit reveal and now with the exclusive interview with Tana. I'm hoping I'm on that list, guys. Uh, I'm uh, I'm crossing my fingers. I'll send up a couple messages, see if I can get some exclusive stuff myself here on the channel. But uh, I, I'm 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 really not uh, pressing too hard. I, I just I'm appreciative that they're doing this at all because some companies don't do this, and uh, they're not necessary. It's not necessary, but it's definitely very very exciting as a content creator, but also exciting as a player because you're getting a lot of information typically in a well-delivered fashion, as well as specific questions that otherwise might not be answered due to, well, us as players actually drilling them on things. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are these things exciting? I know we just got kind of like a, a summary of things and they're not yet to happen, but it's, I think it's a lot of information, a lot of things that we didn't know before. So overall, very positive sentiment, very happy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all for the next one.